Who is this, Vassos? His father was famously known as the fifth Beatle and now putting the beat back into the Beatles, here comes the sun. The last Beatles song, Now and Then, is out now, so let it be more than hello, goodbye, as we welcome all smiles, Giles Martin! That was... What? That was incredibly impressive and unbelievably corny at the same time. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was your best Get ever. <laughs> Get that mic and drop it on the floor. Yeah. That was so cool. Charles, welcome to the show. Thank you for having so, me on the so, show, Chris. It's an honour always to talk to you. You're a lovely man. Um, and we were talking, whilst that was playing, Rachel had her headphones on listening to it. You were in, you were in then, weren't you? You were mm. totally immersed. You were bathing in the Beatles. Um, we've heard of the music, musical Beetlejuice. Let's have some Beetlejuice now from... Charles Martin. Giles, um, what was it like? That's my only question. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> well, I mean... I have more questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, knew that, I knew that Paul was working on Now and Then, which I didn't know existed, funny enough. I didn't. I'm so rubbish on these things. I was mixing... A, he asked me to remix a wing, Red Rose Speedway, a Wings album. He came to see me at Abbey Road. And I, I, well, somebody works with me and goes, Paul wants to play this song. And I was thinking, God, what if it's what if it's what if it's terrible? I thought, what am I? What do you say to? And it it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And and I just got the impression that, it, you know, it's become this thing, and it came out last week, and it's become the the record of 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 the week or the year or whatever. It was just a man in his house that had a tape of his best mate, and he wanted to work with his best mate again that's what it was and it was beautiful and the fact that i got to you know collaborate with him on it and work with ringo and 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 the and the rest of the family it was just and and i you know i miss my dad he did all the beatles records i feel like i use usurped him even though he's gone and just tried to rip him off with the string arrangement that's what i did so uh, that's what it was it's not your first beatles radio though is it it's not i've been right in the yeah no it isn't i i yeah it's been it's been a long time i i did this project called love which was an album but more so a show in vegas which still goes on where i sort of you know uh mashed up the beatles to create a collage of sound um which i did when i was young and ever since then, I've been doing. You know, people think I just <laughs> I do Beatles, but I, it's 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 the, it's the thing I talk about. And uh, and yeah, I I never thought I'd ever be involved in this this band, but I can't. I'm always I never take it for granted. But it's such a it's such a small unit. You know, there would be, you know, me or Paul phoning up Ringo talking about the drums, talking about talking about the strange French, phoning up Yoko and Sean or Olivia and Danny, and that's it. And then we do it, and then after a while it becomes this thing and it was like transatlantic was all digital you'll send them something they'll send you something yeah um paul and i got together i flew out to la right um he was in a, and 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 we got together and, and actually doing the string arrangement was interesting um because he, he said listen you know this is how he is he goes listen to what george is playing the guitar you need to appreciate what he's doing and make sure you follow that rhythm listen that's his this this is you know this is a beatles record and Every member of this band's really good, and you better make sure oh that you respect. Gosh. That's how it is. It's it's not about you know. It was more it was more about that than anything else, and that's that's the thing that rides through anything. You know, you know, I mixed Revolver last year, and he said, you know, isn't it incredible the way Ring gets the drums, or the way I remember George playing this guitar part, or John doing this. That was it. And with the technology, we suddenly had John John's voice, and it's 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 a Beatles record. How much? Without Peter Jackson and get back anyway, which you're also massively involved yeah. in, weren't you? It's just so funny. It's so funny talking to you. <laughs> it was Charles. a lockdown project. Yeah. Also, has to, he, has to... By the way, he only mixed Elton John at Glastonbury as well, <laughs> you know, one Sunday afternoon. That went on there. Was it Saturday night? I can't remember. Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was Sunday. Last, 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 Sunday, last show, it? yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like a, an age ago now. Yeah. Um, so, so tell us about, I mean, we, we heard a bit about it there. I mean, obviously, Peter adores the Beatles. You know, I'm good friends with Peter Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did he do? What did he discover? What is it that he created and invented with his genius um, uh, co-workers that we can now, all, we're all now benefiting from with to do with this song? Well, it's 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 it sounds um, simple, but it's incredibly complicated. If you imagine being given a cake and then going, okay, I want the flour, eggs, milk, and sugar, everything back, completely clean whole. and separate, whole. Oh my god, that's what it's like. <laughs> so, 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 so we did this with Get Back. There was a lot of. Um, dialogue and guitars being played over the top because they're, they're warming up and they're playing and and I couldn't understand why they're, they're getting it so clean and there's a guy called Emile Delaray, brilliant name and I went, you know, 
He goes, this is what we're doing. And I said, well, can we apply this to music? We do this with, with Revolver. Taxman has drums, bass, and guitars all on one track. Can you separate them? And he goes, you're going to, I'll send you stuff, and then then you'll get back to me? I was like, yeah. And, and we worked, collaborated on making this better to the stage where it became incredibly good. And so a cassette of John playing the piano in his house while watching TV, we can then have piano, house noise, voice, and TV all separate. If you put them back together, they're exactly how they were. So it's not AI generating anything, it's AI learning what John's voice and extracting from the track, and that's how we get his voice so, like so that. So they do say you can't get the eggs out of a baked cake, but you can if you're involved I with think the Beatles. Because the Beatles can do anything, aren't they? Well, that's what's lovely is that still, you know, we are the first, the Sergeant Peppers for the first Dolby Atmos album. We're still, a, we, the, the Beatles demand new technology even now, yep. and that's what we're doing. And what's what's really poetic about this whole hero's journey of the Beatles and their songs is that the the early songs that I'm not going to say it was a sausage factory, but they were quick, man. You know, it was two albums a year, and it was singles, extra singles that weren't on the albums. I mean, they were they had to get on with it. So to get a Beatles song, you know, from a demo, whether it be whichever Beatle it was or combination of the Beatles, to your dad. Then they'd break for lunch. Then he'd come up with a minuet in the middle of a song and it would make the song. And then he'd come up with other things that break the songs. Then he'd put it all back together. That was one thing and, and getting it out there. And that's why a lot of Beatles lyrics that come up for auction are on the back of res- uh, menus or mm. plane tickets because they, they were touring as well at the yeah. time. It's mad, wasn't it? Crazy. To this one taking so long. And I love that. Because it's so ironically the opposite of how songs, the Beatles songs used to be made. Well, yeah, it, when you say it took so, it took so long from the, from its generation to then they worked on it. But when we're working, yeah, I mean, like if Ringo said to me, he goes, "I'll listen to it twice and I'll play the drums twice." Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, so it's about 20, so yeah, 20, when they're when they're ready for minutes. takeoff. Yeah, it's just you know the string arrangement that it's it's it, people said did Paul did Paul spend a long time working? Yeah, it's like it's Paul McCartney. Yeah, you know he he he'll literally go. I'll put some piano on it. He'll go and put some piano on it and come back. Oh my god! That's it. It's not. There's no the 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 reason why people go. What's the magic behind the sound? Uh, the reason why is because people are really really good at what they do. Yeah, and That's they, as simple as that. Yeah, and they all four of them chose to do it together. Yeah. And they could have all done it individually, and they did yeah. do it individually. And and, the, and they loved and they helped each other. That's there's an empathy for whatever they had such an unbelievable and still do it an unbelievable respect for what everyone does. Mm. And that's the perfect band. You know, and you see that footage of Ringo putting laying the drums down, you know, and he's back, isn't it? He? He's back. You know, that that's we talked about um, Homer Simpson earlier on because he's ageless because he's a cartoon yeah. character well when Paul picks up the guitar or starts thinking thinking music he, he's the age he always was yeah. whatever that is well that's there's a video Peter Jackson made a video for this with, 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 with this for this rat track which people should watch because it's truly it's 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 mind blowing because what it does it shows Paul now and Paul then and it's a bit corny but what it does is you tell and I was told this you're 25 years old and you go your brain won't change you know things will get old, you'll have experience you have kids everything will happen but most you, things but, won't but, change but you, 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 most things won't change you'll be the same person locked inside this body and that's what we only find out later on in life did you did you sense did it occur to you is it just occurring to me because I'm not you. Um, and I want to be you. Um, that, <laughs> I want to be you. <laughs> did, did you get a flavour, a sense of how your dad might have felt in the middle of all this? Well, we worked together on a track called Grow Old With Me, which was on, from a John Lennon cassette, years ago together. And I think he would have loved this. I think he would have loved the fact that um, that he got a chance to hear John again. And I think he would love the sentiment behind the song. John was brilliant writing bittersweet songs. Now, whether the song was written about Paul and the Beatles or the Rony Beatles or written about Yoko, it's under interpretation. We'll never know. But it has that feeling. And the Beatles were always lucky. And this sounds like the last Beatles song. That's the, that's the funny. It doesn't sound like the and Beatles. And it's called you know. Now and Then. It's yeah. like you couldn't, you couldn't write it. Yeah. <laughs> well, even if you're a Beatle, I suppose. <laughs> but no, he, he'd, have, he'd have loved it. He'd have absolutely loved it. You um, still go and see Paul um, whenever you can in concert. Last time you took your mum? I took my mum last time. I took my mum last time to the O2. My mum sadly passed away um, and we had a, we had a f- her funeral. I, I had my life happens on the day of release of this record, funny enough. Wow. Um, and she was a lovely lady and, she, and Paul loved her. He sent me, Paul and Ringo sent me lovely messages. 
we saw him in concert the O2. The funny thing is, I'm very tall. I'm six foot four. I was standing watching him doing Hey Jude, and he suddenly caught my eye. And there was that moment where, you know, I think if you look at a crowd, you're never meant to see someone in a crowd, especially at the O2. Um, and he phoned me up. He phoned me because I saw you. I saw you. I was like, I know. I'm sorry about that. He missed a couple of beats, didn't he? Yeah, he, he just stopped singing. <laughs> it was like, I waved at him. It was like one of those moments. Could have been worse or better. Could have sang Hey, G- hey Giles. Yeah, that would have been that, that would have been, been the best. Yeah, come hey, on. Hey, Giles! Yeah. <laughs> Giles, don't put me off. I'm doing a gig. Is that your mum? But he's just, no, Paul is just a lovely man. He is a. He really he, is. He is, a, he is, a, he is not only a genius, but he's a lovely lovely man and what this record and this it's people go oh you know is this the right what's the the motivation behind this record? The motivation with Paul really wanting to do something with John just in his house which he kind of did wow um loads of text dear Chris and everyone thank you for sharing that incredible clip on the program it's so beautiful so personal and intimate it's more than a clip isn't it we're calling it a clip but it was 12 minutes long. <laughs> significant a significant it's clip. it's to the world of clips as, as the Indian Ocean is to a puddle um, so beautiful, so personal and intimate. How amazing to go back in time with the Beatles. I can't stop crying. Joe in Hull, you made my eyes start watering again. Thanks for explaining that. Mel from Hereford, currently running, so can't make out if it's the rain or the tears that are escaping down my face. I suspect it's the latter. What a fabulous reminder of the even more fabulous four. Of course, because of your age, you're, pres- you know, the odds are that you're going to be around for a lot longer than people <laughs> close to the Beatles or in the Beatles. I mean, as your life... Um, as you, as you get older, is that it is a responsibility, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not, that's not, I hope it doesn't sound burdensome, but it is a responsibility. It's like my mum. My mum was in the war. So when she was telling me stories about the war, it's from somebody who was in the war. You know, your dad basically was in the Beatles. Mm. You are still around. Um, the, the sons and the daughters of the Beatles are still around. Um, How's that going to be going forward? I mean, the first thing I'd say, my dad wasn't in the Beatles because it's, it's very protected. There was only, the thing about the Beatles, there was only four of them and yeah. they experienced that life together. Yeah. And only they experienced that life All together. Right. Okay. But I know, but I know. He was as close I know, as you can get absolutely, to not and, being a Beatles. And love them and close to them. Um, for me, the strange thing for me is that you work on Get Back and I look like my dad and I sound like my dad. And you try, <laughs> are you trying to, honestly, you're trying to avoid these things in life. You really do. I don't, and you're I don't as want, nice as your dad. I don't want to be, well, thank you. I don't want to be, you, know, you don't want to be like your dad when you're growing up. You know, it's fine when you're older. And I, watched, I was working on Get Back and I was like, oh my God, I'm like my dad. And the weird thing is I'm working on it and he's younger than I am now doing Get Back. And that's when I showed my, I got Eva and Alice, my daughter, I was like, look, and they go, is that you? And I go, no, that's your grandfather looking in like 1969 looking like a dude. Sharp as you like. That's, a, that's upsetting as well. Um, but it, it, is, <laughs> yeah, it, it is, it is, it's, it's, you know, you. this is, of all the people talking about, you know, you work on Beatles direction, we're going to talk about the ethics of doing it. And I think there's so many more important things that are ethical in the world right now than whether I decide to put Ringo on the left-hand side or right side when I'm mixing a track. But everything's relative. Everything is relative. My point is, is that music is, the one, is one of those things that can make people feel and stimulate memories, happiness, sad, that doesn't do any harm at all. And so if I can work on a Beatles project, people go, wait a second, I love here, there, and everywhere. You know, I love Strawberry Fields. I love, and they listen to it. And even if they don't like the mix, they just go, they think about it. And it's time you stop looking at your phones and you just listen to music and have <laughs> memories. You know what I mean? It's that's, that's what's lovely about it. And the Beatles were one of the best at it. Okay, here we go then. You went there, not me. Not me. I didn't go there, you just went there. Okay, here, there, and everywhere, right? Across the universe, in my life. And... um if I fell. My four favourite Beatles songs from the Fab Four. Um, what about you? Give me four. <laughs> okay. Give me four from the Fab Four. I think I'd have to choose. I really, I, I really say like... that. I say that. I love the whole of Abbey Road yeah, as much as any. I of those love songs. the whole of the Abbey Road medley at the end. Yeah. I love something on Abbey Road, but I also love for no one. Yeah. I love in my life. I love Julia. Um, yeah. Uh, it's hard because it's hard and it's stupid why did I do that that's just a stupid thing to do in front of Giles actually <laughs> do you know what I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plea for the defence here I'm going to say that here there and everywhere reminded me most of those other three songs I just said for me they just come off the, off the back of each other yeah I, I just think that the, 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 Norwegian the, 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 the ah, way, yeah, how good is Norwegian the, the, and the way people the way people just 
discover them the way new generation. I was, I was with, I was with, I was with Eva in the car, and she said she was playing me like you know nobody does better Carly, by Carly Simon and and Fleetwood Mac, and then and then I was this is great. And she put on yesterday. I went yesterday. And she goes, it's a good song, Dad. <laughs> and you go, Fair enough, you know. <laughs> That's the thing. Obla di Obla da is the work of. If you listen to Obla di Obla da with headphones, so that none of the world can get between yeah. you and it, there's so much going on there. Yeah. How much of that was your dad, or the tool sounds and all this kind of stuff? I think you know his his background of as as a, his background of doing comedy records. That was yeah, his that was his thing, and he loved he loved all the things. And then John and Paul and the Beatles loved the Goon shows, and they and they were encouraged to make noises. Listen, we've all got boxes in our garages of stuff, right? I was clearing, clearing more out on Sunday, you know, rearranging the boxes. And then we got, we've all got loftfuls of stuff as well. What's the, what's, the, what's the most interesting thing that you found in one of your boxes, Giles? <laughs> uh, what do I have? Show me your box. Um, oh, when while, you've been rooting. Uh, yeah, no, not rooting. A while back, actually, and, and I, I got to keep it. And we'll pass it down for generations. Is we we found an acetate in the loft. We found two acetates, and I took them to Abbey Road. What's an acetate? For people an ac- don't know. So an acetate is is if you imagine, um, uh, you can't even say cassette anymore. When you made a record, the only way you could listen to it is by having it printed onto one side of a vinyl. So they're vinyls of one side, and that would be what you took home with you before it was made into a proper record. And so a reference copy. And they had two acetates, and one was this mad, strange man singing. It turned out to be Peter Ustinov doing Mozart, which I think was a single my dad released. And the other was Love Me Too, but the drums are weird. I don't want to say what they were like, but they were... And I phoned up my dad. I said, that's weird drums. And he goes, no, I, I think it must be Pete Best. And he goes, no, we never recorded it with Pete Best. And it was the only copy of Love Me Do with Pete Best. And it went on the anthology. And you have it. I've had that since, yeah, since then. <sighs> yeah. So so that was that was a good box. Not that you'd ever sell it. You'd never do no, it. You know, not. it's that thing. It's like, you know. But what a thing to find. I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, what? Um, so you, yeah, I bet, it, I bet you've got lots of, lots of boxes like yeah. that. <laughs> right, well, come on. We're almost out of time. What else um, around this? Anything else around this? Anything else we can get ex- even more excited about? It's well, number t- one, for heaven's sake. It's well, number I'll one t- around the world. I'll, t- I'll, tell, you what I've, I'll, t- I'll t- tell you what I've done. Um, we we remix the red and blue albums now for a generation yes, which is my which is my which is my which is my generation. The red and blues were proper bona fide Beatles albums. They're like Queen's Greatest Hits or Bob Marley Legend or that's the it's 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 that thing. And what has been probably the most exciting, including now in breakthrough for me, is I use Peter Jackson's technology, which has been able to separate um, things the cake together. And the early tracks, like I saw us down there, I Want to Hold Your Hand, Hard Hard Day's Night is immense now. You can hear Ringo's kick drum and snare drum. I know, so, and I, I played it to, I, I, tell you, I played it to, I, I, I'm good friends with Penn and Teller, and Penn Gillette is a massive, and I, he came over the studios just recently, and I said, I said, look, press the button. He goes, where's the song gone? I went, that's, that's the original. And what's happened is, you, and what we do is we, sorry, Ringo, George, John, and then we put them back through Studio 2 in Abbey Road and we re-record them. The band are in the room and people should listen to the Red and Blue albums. Are they out now? Sorry, I know... I sh- They're out on Friday, They're out on Friday. Okay, that's it. Done deal. Coming Buy- soon. Buying those, buying those. Giles, it is a joy to talk to you. Uh, it's such a pleasure to see Seriously. you again, Chris. I remember when you came in to talk about the love show. Yeah. Um, was that 20 years ago? It was, yeah, so it's been going for 17 years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I thought it was like... A couple of years ago, yeah. you came in to talk we, about we, that. We, That's we, the first we, time we met, I think. Yeah, it was the first time we met. Woo! All right. Great to see you. And you, see you. guess where he's going off to work now? Abbey Road. Because that's where he works. <laughs> You you clock into Abbey Road every day. I you clock, clock into Abbey Road every day. That's yeah. hilarious. What's the food like? The food the food's good, Abbey Road. <laughs> I can't say it isn't, can I? The funny thing, the funny thing is, I walk in, people go, it's people outside go, hello, Giles, and I think I know them. Like, how are you? And they go, how are you doing? I mean, how, how fine? How are you? And they go, no, I don't know you. I'm just standing outside yeah. Abbey Road. And uh, um, who's who's been around Abbey Road recently doing amazing things? Oh, we've had we've had a, we've had quite a few films, and I haven't been there because I've been dealing with lots of doing this. Um, I've just finished, we've just been finished doing an Amy Winehouse film. Wow! Last day of recording was yesterday, wow. so and the, and the girl playing her is amazing. So brilliant, I've been doing that there. All right, mate. Well, it's great to see you. Thank you so much. Now and then, by the Beatles is the out Beatles. now. Their brand new single <laughs> from the. That's just good fun. Do you want to go? Go have a go. The brand new single by the Beatles.
Yeah. Now Wait, and then. Got your little girl. This is because it's true. This is the coming up next. Now and then by the Fab Four. Yeah. All right. Cheers, Giles. Thank you.